1920. I remember all the excitement when into a British port sailed a couple that all the world seemed crazy to meet. Idols of the silver screen have always provided a great attraction, but no subsequent display of fan worship has ever quite come up to what those two received. A golden-haired little Hollywood actress and her romantic, acrobatic husband. Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks. Douglas Senior, to be exact. London, Paris, every European capital was their oyster. And wherever they went, it was flowers and general hysteria. In such a new medium as the cinema was then, these two were the first real stars in the whole bright firmament. The world's sweetheart, they called her. And to many, Mary Pickford personified that whole first generation of really free women ready to do any man's job and maybe even do it better. Already those who had worked the fields and factories during the recent war were seeking fresh pastures in mass emigrations to Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Already there were women lawyers, women doctors and even women dentists. Training like beavers they were to wrench the molars from the allied forces of occupation. I tell you, it took pluck to guard the Rhineland in those days. Alice Delizia shocked some when she kicked off at a football match, but a few titters of disapproval couldn't stem such a tide. No, sir, or madam. Suddenly on the sports fields, there were women center forwards, goalkeepers, right backs, left backs, and better halves. Women had spotted their goals and were now all out to get them. Gone with the wind of war were the ladies of Victorian and Edwardian England, the ladies that once would have bathed only when covered from head to toe. Now the beaches of Britain were displaying, well, more than any respectable woman should. Splashing about as though in the privacy of their own bathrooms, the shameless fuzzies. Yes, women had their behinds in the saddle and their feet on the pedals, and there was no stopping them. In the race for superiority, Men were hard-pressed even to catch up. And after the years of war, there seemed a lot of catching up to do. Only often, it was a little difficult to decide on the best way of doing it. Someone tried to play the piano for over a hundred hours, non-stop. Unaccompanied, of course. Yes, in the throes of self-expression, quite a few went off the deep end. <laughs> 